we'll continue with our discussion of thin aerofoil theory. So quickly, we are trying to solve this integral equation where gamma is the vorticity, which got a velocity like quantity times dx e. So this becomes a vortex, very infinitely small vortex. It used to be on the camber line, but now we have shifted it to the x-axis, so it goes from zero to c. So this is the distance between the point p and the point, point c. c. C is the variable of integration. P is held fixed. Notice that the sign here has reverse between here and here because the right hand side we have to reverse alpha and dz dx. That's all we have done. In our previous lecture, we said it's common to change a variable to make this easily integrable. Taylor series doesn't work, polynomial doesn't work. So a series called Fourier series is used on the numerator for gamma. And also the variable C is replaced instead of a distance like quantity into an angle like quantity, which is a change of variable. So after much trial and error, we mentioned that the people who developed the thin aerofoil theory came up with a change of variable such as these. So C was varied by theta. The x was expressed in terms of theta naught. It could easily be shown that when theta is zero, C is zero. Then theta equal to pi, C equal to cot. So this is how we did this. Therefore, dx C is simply the differential of this quantity, C over two sine theta d theta. How about the gamma itself? We said this expression in the previous videos, we said if we had used a sine series, cosine series also, at the trailing edge, we would have violated the Kutta condition because we may have gotten a non-zero gamma at the trailing edge, causing the flow to go around the trailing edge, either from the bottom side to top side, or a top side to bottom side. Because flow leaves smoothly at the trailing edge, gamma of theta should be zero when theta equal to pi. So cosine n pi is not zero. That's why that was not included. They kept only the sine n pi terms. And then this also goes to zero at the trailing edge. But at the leading edge, this goes to some infinite number, but it's an integrable singularity. This is a convergent series. That means the terms will be smaller and smaller, hopefully. But we really need only A0, A1, and A2 to compute the lift, pitching moment, and so forth, as we will see later on. So <coughs> gamma zero is zero, gamma theta is zero, at theta equal to pi. So the sine series ensures it's zero. How about this number here? One plus cosine theta is two cosine squared theta over two. This is two times sine theta over two pi cosine theta over two. So two cancels above and below. One of the cosine theta over two cancels. So we get basically cosine theta over two by sine theta over two. So when theta equal to pi, if theta equal to zero at the leading edge, this becomes one, pardon me, this becomes equal to one. This is a, uh, zero, so it's singular, infinite, but when theta equal to pi, zero over one, so this term becomes zero at the trailing edge, so coda condition is satisfied. So we have replaced the series, so the gamma C had a constant a, a, a naught, one plus cosine theta over sine theta. Dx C has got a C over two sine theta, so this C sine theta and this sine theta cancel out. And we also replace the X and C by C over two cosine theta, C over two sine theta and so forth. That will C chord will cancel. The two will cancel with that. This, this used to be a two pi, so the two will become go in here. So this is what happens to the leading term. This is the Fourier series. Again, there was a 2 here, uh, c over 2, so the 2 cancel with the 2 pi. So this is an infinite series. Our unknowns are buried in here. We don't know what is a naught. We don't know what is a n. We don't know what a 2 yet. Okay. Nice thing is, these are, can be integrated. There are tables of integrals that we could look up and analytically integrate it from 0 to pi. That's the main reason people use this Fourier series. So it turns out, this is from a book called Anderson, 
you don't need to buy it but if you look it up there's a chapter four they just write this down they don't derive it this is a integral that appears in the second term in here sine theta sine and theta by cosine theta minus cosine theta naught how about this thing here even a cosine theta that means uh, that can also be analytically integrated by cosine theta minus cosine theta naught so after some manipulation and some light algebra you get this expression what unknowns a naught a1 a2 are still buried inside this series now this is a Fourier series so there is a trick we could do to explicitly compute a naught a1 a2 a4 etc but uh, it turns out we only need a naught a1 and a2 to compute the lift coefficient which we are interested in and the pitching moment coefficient which we are interested in cm to find out why this is let's take a uh, before we do that let's see how we would find a naught a1 a2 etc if we just simply integrate this from 0 to pi integral of cosine n theta d theta from 0 to pi is sine n theta by n when you set it to 0 and pi sine n theta will go to 0 so this will completely disappear when you integrate this from 0 to pi this will become a naught over pi so what you get is 1 over pi times integral of this quantity with respect to d theta naught so you still have some integration this may be a numerical integration if this function is kind of complicated but the a naught is explicitly known we can bring out alpha outside if we wish then it will become minus 1 over pi times simply the integral of the Campbell line okay. you have to express the Campbell line change a variable from c to theta naught or x to theta naught then we have to integrate it that's what we would have to do. We will show some worked out examples to show you how to compute the A naught a little bit later. How about uh, A1, A2, etc.? It turns out if you multiply this series by cosine m theta naught and integrate it from left to right from 0 to pi, cosine m theta naught times cosine m theta naught is 0. By the way, cosine m theta naught by itself, if you integrate it, is 0 also. So A naught will disappear. Of all this series, the only thing that will survive is the cosine n theta naught by cosine n theta naught. It's the only thing that will survive. So A n times cosine n theta naught times cosine n theta naught. This, uh, this turns out to be pi over 2. Therefore, we will get A n times pi over 2 equal to integral of alpha minus dz cosine n theta naught d theta naught. The minus is here because when you integrate this, alpha will go to zero, alpha times cosine n theta naught. So this minus sign minus stands out here. So this is what we have. So again, we have to analytically somehow integrate this or numerically integrate the Campbell line to get the a1, a2, etc. But once we have done it, we explicitly know a naught, a1, a2, etc. So we will do a numerical example or an analytical, a couple of analytical examples to show you how this is done. Now we are not interested in the Fourier series for the distribution of vorticity, although it's very interesting. We are interested in the lift and pitching moment. We, we know that this is a potential flow, there's no skin friction, there's no stagnation pressure loss, therefore there's no drag, therefore by D'Alembert's paradox, we are not going to get any drag, but we certainly expect lift and pitching moment. So for attached flow, we have to go to some auxiliary theory, such as a boundary layer theory to compute the drag. For separated flow, you'll also get a pressure drag, so you will need Navier-Stokes equations. X-Foil uses primarily for attached flows, plus some crude approximation for separated flow. If you use fluent, you can handle both attached flow and separated flow both may be handled. Okay, we are interested in lift. So take a small slice here. It's got a circulation of gamma C times dx C. This is D gamma. Therefore, the DL from this tiny slice is rho times V infinite times D gamma. 
which is this stuff. So all we have to do is be integrated to get the L prime, we just need to integrate from leading edge to trailing edge. So replace C by C over to sin theta d theta, like we did dx by C over to sin theta d theta. Gamma theta is a Fourier series, so plug in the Fourier series, which is it was developed way up in here. So multiply this by sine theta and integrate it from leading edge to trailing edge. So it turns out when you do that, only A naught and A1 survive. Okay, nothing else survives because sine n theta times sine theta is zero when you integrate it from zero to pi. So using a table of integrals, we find the L prime equal to rho v infinity squared c pi times a naught plus a1 over 2. Rho was already there, v infinity was already there, c was already there. The other v infinity comes from the definition of the Fourier series, a naught has got a v infinity in here. Okay, So we pick up a v infinity squared. So we are interested in uh, not dimensional quantities, non-dimensional quantities. When you do the non-dimensional quantity, you get 2 pi times a naught plus a1 over 2. This a naught and a1 depend only on the Campbell line slope and Campbell line slope before we rotate it to make it into a wind tunnel coordinate system. So if you have the dz over dx analytically or numerically, we could perform this integration to find a naught and a1 then we can solve for the CF. Sounds complicated, but we are going to do a worked out example a little bit later in our lecture series of lectures and videos. How about the pitching moment? At the leading edge, this is an upward directed force, therefore it's going to produce a nose down pitching moment. Remember, clockwise, everything is positive because Y axis is going into the plane of the paper the axis along the x-axis, z is perpendicular to the plane of the paper, y is going to the plane of the paper. So clockwise moment is positive. This is a counterclockwise moment, so we put a minus here. So all we have to do is take this dl expression that we had here, multiply by c, then integrate it. Again, do a change of variables. Replace c by c over 2 times 1 plus cosine theta, as we saw earlier, which is the change of variable, 1 minus cosine theta, as we saw earlier. d x e, we put this one. And gamma x e, we put this series and integrate away. So after some uh, tedious integration, again, fortunately, someone else has done it for us. We get the CM at the leading edge equal to this quantity. Notice I just got a negative sign, got a negative sign. If you want to shift it from leading edge to the quarter card point, so at the leading edge we have the lift, the leading edge pitching moment. So if you wanted to shift it to the quarter card point, the pitching moment at the quarter card point is pitching moment to the leading edge, which by convention is positive clockwise, plus the extra moment produced by this lift force times the distance between the leading edge and the quarter card point. Non-dimensionally, it's CL times 1 over 4. Therefore, CM at the quarter card point is CM at the leading edge plus CL over 1 over 4. So when we do that, this disappears. We get A2 and A1. So this is the pitching moment at the quarter card point that we get. Okay. So we are going to do some worked out examples. Here I have some here from Anderson. It's kind of complicated but we will do more worked out examples in, a, in the next series of videos. So we'll stop our particular video theory. We have developed all the theory we need for the lift and pitching moment from the thin air of fire theory already. We only need A0 and A1, so we're going to show you how to do it using a series of examples.